somebody. It is to bring healing to somebody. And many of us have gotten into a season where we want to keep our mouths shut. You, you have become bitter. Who am I talking to? You've become, you, you've become bitter. You've become bitter. Come on. You don't want to say anything to anybody. You don't want to minister to nobody. They ask you to pray. You turn in your head. Come on. But I'm telling you now is not the season to shut your mouth. And now is not the season to put your gift in a box and, and close it up. This is the time to unbox some stuff. Come on. This is the time to pull it back out because what God has has in you, what he has instilled in you, what he has invested in you, it's going to heal somebody. It's going to heal more than somebody. But the enemy has blinded your eyes. And come on, he has, he has turned your mind into thinking that what you have is not needed. But I'm here to tell you it is. Peter said, look at us. That was his insecurity talking. That was, that was his insecurity speaking, saying, look, I don't look at me. What do I have to give you? But I'm here to tell you, I'm looking at you and you've got a lot to offer. Stop comparing yourself to anybody, to other people. The reason Peter said, look at us is because Peter is comparing himself to everybody else standing around. Out of all these people, you're asking us for alms. Look at us. But yeah, look at you. Who told you to shut your mouth? Who told you to put your gifting on the back burner because it wasn't needed? Because that person didn't need it. Come on. Doesn't mean somebody else won't. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Rise up and walk. And he took his hand and helped him up. See, most of us want to speak, but we don't want to do the work. Peter didn't did not just prophesy to him. Come on. But he took his hand and he helped him up. We want to prophesy to people, but we don't want to take their. I know I'm preaching good. This is why the enemy want to mess with my Internet this morning. We, we want to preach, but we don't want to take their hand. Glory be to God. We don't want to take their hand and show them the way. We don't want to take their hand and say, all right, now that the Lord has healed you, this is how you stay healed. Now that the Lord has freed you, this is how you stay free. This is how you don't go back and be entangled again with the with the yoke of bondage. Once you once you minister once you prophesy once you lay hands come on we can't just leave them out there you've got to take them by the hand and say come on let me show you the way let me show you the way you might not have money to give them come on you might not have a, a, a storage unit to clothe them. Come on. You might not have a pantry because you coupon and you've got all this food to give away. Come on to people who need food. But there's something in your mouth. Y'all don't hear me. There's something in your hands. Come on. There's something in your gifting. There's something in your presence. Come on. When, when Peter walked by people, they were healed by his shadow. You, you don't hear me this morning. God bless you, prophetess Holmes. You, you don't hear me this morning. When, when he walked by them, his shadow brought healing. There's something in you, but you've got to use what you got. Don't you dare allow the enemy to trick you into thinking that you closing your mouth is beneficial. That you just, oh, I'm just going to go to church and I'm just not going to say nothing to nobody. I'm just going to sit back and be quiet and hear the word. And when the word is over, I'm just going to leave and go home. That is a trick of the enemy. That is a trick of the enemy. He wants to isolate you. He wants to make you antisocial. He wants to make you feel like people don't love you. He wants to make you feel like people don't like you. The, the man at the gate saw something in, in Peter and John that Peter and John didn't see in themselves. You wonder why people pull on you and you wonder why people flock to you and they're always, I need, I need, I need, I need because they see something in you. They see that you've got something and they want it. And them wanting it is not a bad thing because God gave it to you, not for you. He gave you this anointing, God, for, my God, for somebody else to be healed. I, I used to say all the time, me and my friend Elder Tower, we used to say all the time, uh, you know, people say, what you're going through is never for you, it's for somebody else. And I would say all this stuff I'm going through, somebody owes me some money. 
Because <laughs> I'm going through all this for you. So I can tell you how to come out. So I, I need a consultation fee. I need a coaching fee. Prophet j -Li, I need something. Because listen here now. But you've got to use what you've got. Okay, so nobody called you to preach. And you're on a job. Somebody there needs to hear the word. <laughs> you went into Walmart this week. Somebody there needs to hear the word. You went to the gas station. Somebody there needs to hear the word. Use what you've got and use it when God tells you to use it. Stop relying on, a, on, on, on somebody to call you and put you in position. When God gave you the gift, he gave you the position then. The, but the problem is we want to be on this major platform. We want to be seen. Honey, every, every gift that the Lord gives you, you may not be seen. Every time I prophesy is not behind a podium. Most of the time when I minister is in my salon. There's no mic there. There's no keyboard. There's no Hammond B3. There's no drums. There's nobody running around the church. Come on, but as I'm as I'm touching these women's head and these these uh, teenagers' heads, and I'm praying for them. Come on, the Lord begins to speak, and the Lord begins to heal them. And sometimes I'm praying for them, and the Lord is healing them, and they don't even know it. I I never even mention it, but I've done what He told me to do. See what. Well, <clears throat> We want to use what we've got when we can use it to be seen. That's not ministry. If that's where your heart is at, then maybe you need to go back to the altar and refocus and get them insecurities together. Because Peter said, look at us. And, and that's the problem. Many of you want to say, look at me. <laughs> I don't want you to look at me. I want you to look unto the hills which come at your help. I want you to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't look at me. <laughs> I've got something for you. But what I've got for you is him. He is the healer. That man at the gate said all these people passing by. But Peter and John, can you give me some alms? They didn't even catch that in the spirit. Yeah, he, this man was, he, he was worldly. He probably wanted some physical money. But as poor as they may have looked to themselves, he saw richness in them. People see richness in you. They see the anointing on you. They see the anointing in you. Come on. They look at, they look at you and say, that person has something that can help me. That person has something that, can, that, that I can connect with. Now, mind you, you've got to be careful who you connect with. Because everybody tapping on your shoulder don't have the right motives. Don't have the right idea. This is why we got to go back to, to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all of your ways. Acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. But we want to sit back. This is, this is the gift that the Lord has given us. And one person turns us down. So we want to we wanna slowly cover the gift. We're going to cover half of it. We're going to slowly cover more. You come to the church and, and, and you got a voice. Somebody hears your voice and you hadn't even sung. They just hear you talking. Oh, Sister Susie, you sing? I, I do a little something. And you know that you can really blow. Stop minimizing what God has given to you with this false humility. Let the Lord use you in the gifting that he's given you, in the anointing that he's placed on your life, because it's going to bring healing. My daughter Genesis is on here. This girl could sing Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall and it will break me down. And she doesn't do all these riffs and runs, but her voice is anointed to bring healing. When she calls me on the phone and I'm at work and I have her on speaker, people are overwhelmed with the sound of her voice by her just talking. But the problem is the enemy wants to make us feel like our gift isn't that important. Oh, I, my gift isn't as important as the past is. My, you know, my, I'm, I'm just the nurse at the church. My gift isn't as important as the keyboard is. Honey, the hand is just as important as the foot, as the feet. Come on. The arm is just as important as the neck. We all work together. 
Because if one, if one part of the body is disabled, we are all disabled. When someone is, is deemed disabled, it's not because the entire body is dysfunctional. It's because one or more parts of the body has become dysfunctional. And when we as the body of Christ decide that we are not going to be functional in the kingdom of God, it disables the entire body. I know I'm preaching good. Uh, David encouraged himself, girl, you preaching. He needs the entire body. So you've got to stop sitting back on your gift and saying what you're not going to do. Stop saying, look at me. What do I don't, I, uh, 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 I don't, I can't pray like them. We didn't ask you to pray like them. We just asked you to pray. We didn't ask you to preach like them. We just asked you to preach. We didn't ask you to sing like them. We just asked you to sing. We didn't, am I preaching, Pastor Frederick? Thank you, sir. Come on. We didn't ask you to beat the drums like them. We just asked you to beat the drums. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. You've got to use what you've got. The promotion comes up on the job. You know you're qualified for it. You look at your resume, what, what they're asking for. You got it, but fear seeps in. And you will know, because I know Sister Susie might apply. Uh, brother brother Bobo might apply. And I'm sure they're going to get it because they're close with the boss. Honey, you've got something that they don't have. And that's God's favor. I don't care. I don't care. How close people appear to be when God has something signed up for you, Sister April Williams, when God's got something set aside for you. I don't care how chummy they are with the boss. I don't care if them and the boss go out to lunch. I don't care if they play play golf together. I don't care. Come on. If their kids hang out after school, when God's got something set up for you. Your boss has a boss and your boss's boss has a boss. And their boss has a boss. Don't you know that Jesus is the CEO of that company? He is the founder of that company. Honey, if you want the promotion, you, you fast and you pray and you anoint yourself before you walk into that job. And you pray for the glory of the Lord to be upon your application, to be upon your resume, to be upon you. And you trust him. You trust him. And I'm telling you, even if you don't get that one, there's another one right around the corner that's better for you. I, I don't know if some, the people from True Light may or may not remember, it was years ago. I applied for a job at a company here in my city. Um, if working for the government. And, and I had gotten through the interview and the manager messaged me two weeks later and said, oh my God, that was the best interview that I've had in 20 something years. Listen, but they didn't hire me. My heart was broken, y'all. My Babe, you remember that? He's sitting right here. My heart was broken that they didn't hire me. You remember April, thank you. But guess what? A couple months later, that same boss that messaged me and said it was the best interview she did she ever had, but they went with somebody else. The whole team was arrested <laughs> for embezzlement. God protected me. His no is your protection, not your rejection. His no is your protect is is your protection, not your rejection. Somebody tell y'all no and you go into a corner and pout and ball up and nobody wants me. Nobody loves me. Stop having these pity parties, baby. His no is your protection, not your rejection. Because sooner than later, he blessed me with something way better, with less stress, making more money than I've ever made. <laughs> And then guess what? That shut down. And then guess what? He said, all right, it's enough of that. Go run your own business. And he's blessed me to make just as much as what I was making on that last job. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Because guess what? I, I had the license to do what I'm doing. But I had... I, this is where the Lord has taken me this morning, y'all. Somebody better go get it. I told y'all weeks ago, go get it. <laughs> 
April, I had the license to do hair and I had it tucked away. Didn't really want to mess with it. Doing people's hair on the side here and there really didn't even want to touch it. But the salon has nothing to do with hair. It really is church. Pastor always told me the Lord has a women's ministry for you. That Well, that's it. That's where I minister to the women. That's where they get preached to, hands laid. Come on. Confidential conversations go on there that doesn't leave. Come on. Because some, some of these salons ain't nothing but a gossiping session. We, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to move. But listen here. I use what I've got. I, I pulled that, that license out and dusted it off. Blew that dust off of it. And went and used what I got. Lady, Lady Hunt, God bless you. I went and used what the Lord has given me, what he's gifted me. And many times the enemy said to me, girl, you going into these industry, you see these hairstylists around Charleston, you don't compare to them. You ain't got nothing on them. And I went to one class. And there was a young lady there much younger than me and she's making six figures and she's african-american right here in south carolina and she said i can't do this and i can't do that and i can't do that and i can't do that but this is what i can do i can do this one thing she said i can do quick weaves she said and that's all i do all day and i raised my hand i said you do quick weaves all day you don't do sew wins, you don't do crochet, you don't do silk press, you don't do braids. She said, I can't braid. All I do is glue hair in all day. And she's making six figures in Florence, South Carolina. Because she used what she got. Who am I helping this morning? She used what she's got. So I went home and I got my list out and everything that I felt brought me anxiety or made me nervous or I wasn't comfortable with, I took it off my list. I took it off my list and the things that I know I, I feel good about and I'm good at. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is and the Lord has prospered me. He's prospered my bank account. He's prospered my children. Come on. He's prospered my church with my tithes. Come on, because I've used what I've got. See, the problem is we see everybody else doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Well, they making t-shirts, they making cups, they doing this, they doing that, they doing, they singing, they preaching, they beating the drums, they opening the church, and then da, da 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 So I'm gonna do all these, and you got this long list, and you stressing yourself out because you always trying to compete with somebody, and versus versus you just using what the Lord gave you to do. If it's one thing that He gave you to do, baby, you do that one thing, and you give it everything you've got, and you watch God prosper you, and stop saying, "Look at me." God bless you, prophetess peoples. God bless you, Apostle Whaley. Look at me. This is what Peter said. Look at us. <laughs> Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you. John Mecca McCory, I pray for you now in the name of Jesus that whatever it is that you stand for for your ministry in Kenya, we pray that you do pass through the challenges. We pray for food, shelter, and clothing. Uh, please send me a personal message. Please inbox me so that we can connect with you, and we will remember to keep you in our prayers. God bless you, uh, Brother John McCory. I apologize in advance if I mispronounce your name. You use. God, they, thank you, Prophet. Thank you, Prophet Jayla. You use what you've got. Prophet Jayla does renovations. Come on, he lays them hardwood floors and, and, and does all this stuff. Pastor Wright paints walls. Come on, hangs drywall. They use what they've got and the Lord has prospered them in that area. My husband was on his job for 15 years. He was the boss. Do you hear me? <laughs> he, he was the boss. And last year, last March, we looked at each other and we said, you going to work is costing us money. Y'all hear me? You going to work is costing us money. The job you on is taking money away from us. Because the money you making in two weeks. You can make more than that in one week running your own business. He decided to use what he's got. Y'all better hear me today. 
You better hear, you got a gift to make cupcakes. Well, then baby, make them cupcakes and stop giving them away. Go ahead and sell them. Get it, get up. The problem is, the pro see, we want to speak, but we don't want to do the work. He told him, rise up and walk. But then the next scripture said he took his hand. You got to take your own hand and say, girl, get up from here. Let's go to the store and get our ingredients. Let me, let me find somebody in the, in the church that can make me a label, that can make me a logo. And let me go to these hair salons and these barbershops on a Saturday and see if I can sell some stuff and get my name out there. But no, you just want to sit back and expect everything to just fall on your lap. Success is not going to come to your house and ring your doorbell and say, hey, I found you. You've got to go out there and get it. Pastor talked about when opportunity meets greatness. The opportunity is you made some cupcakes and your whole family was raving over it. Jaw catering, April, raving over that brown rice and red rice and, and, and chicken and meatballs and macaroni and stuff and, and seafood salad. Raving over jaw catering. So now you see the potential. But we want to sit back and not do nothing with it. God bless you, Pastor Julio. We want to sit back and not do nothing with it because we want everybody to just come on. Come on, prophet. Lay hand on me. Ta -ta 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 -ta. The Lord said, no, no, the Lord said for you, you need to get up and do the work. Faith without works is dead. We got all this faith. We got all this mouth in the church. But church people are some of the laziest people. We don't want to do the work. You've got to do the work. Get your EIN number. Get your business license. Get your grant. You've got to invest money to make money. You've got to use what you've got. And guess what? Little becomes much in the hands of the Lord. Little becomes much in the hands of the Lord. I'm trying to turn the heater off. Little becomes much in the hands of the Lord. But you've got to use what he's already given you. Listen, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm already out of time. Y'all turn with me to Exodus. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 4. And I'm going to get out of here. Exodus chapter 4. Verses 1 through 5. Use what you've got. Stop, stop looking at what everybody else has. And what has he given to you? And don't tell me you don't have nothing. Baby, you wouldn't be here on earth if you didn't have nothing. You was created on purpose, for purpose, and with purpose. I don't care if you was created in the back of their, of their car. I don't care if you was created up under the bleachers in the hotel room. I don't care if your daddy was married and your, and your mama was married to somebody else. I don't care how you got here, boo. You, you got here for purpose. That seed, you are a seed. You were planted on purpose. <laughs> for purpose, with purpose, whether your mom and your daddy knew it or not, God had you in mind. Come on, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He knows my name. Exodus chapter four, verses one through five says, then Moses answered, but behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice for they will say, the Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses ran from it. Stop running from the gift God gave you. God gave you the gift, told you what to do with it, and you see it work and then you run from it. Oh my God. Are you getting this? Or are you, is it in your Bible? It may be a different translation, but is it in your Bible? He said, what is that in your hand? A staff. Throw it on the ground. Turn it to a serpent. He runs from it. You saw it work and you run. You, you saw the potential of your business expanding, of your gifting. You saw the potential of people being healed when you sing, when you preach, when you lay hands, when you play the keyboard, when you beat the drums and you run from it. You see the potential. Of people pulling on you and you run from it. My God, somebody. He, he says here, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground. It became a serpent. Moses ran from it. Verse four. But the Lord said to Moses, 
put out your hand and catch it by the tail. You better put your hand back out and catch that thing that God has given you. You better put it back in your hand again. You better use it and let it work for you. You better use what you've got. Because it's not for you. It's going to bring healing to somebody else, but it's going to bless you at the same time. He says, but the Lord said, put out your hand, catch it by the tail. So he put out his hand and caught it and it became a staff in his hand. That they, here's why, because the Lord never tells you to do something without telling you why. He always gives you the why. Are you hearing me? He says that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham. Sorry, I'm a little nasally. The God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. The woman, I'm closing. The woman told the prophet Elijah after he ministered to her and her son. She said, now I know. Now I know that you are a man of God and that the words out of your mouth are the truth. God will use you in such a way that all of your haters, all of the people who doubt that God is with you will have to look up and say, now I know. Now I know that you are a woman of God, that you are a man of God and that the words out of your mouth are the truth. But you have to use what you've got. God bless you, Prophetess Pandora. You've got to use what you've got. Stop looking at everybody else's gift because God has gifted you too. I'm not out of teaching. I'm just out of time. Please remember to join us on tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. 5.30 a.m. tomorrow morning for prayer. I'll be uh, praying. Thank you so much, Pastor Wright. I will be praying in the morning at 5.30 a.m. And on um, every morning, Monday through Friday, we have prayer at 5.30 a.m. on Facebook Live on our church page, not our personal page. Please go and like the church page and hit the notifications, um, hit the follow notification so that you're updated when we're on. Go ahead, set that alarm for, for 5.30 and get up and watch the prayer. You don't even have to move out of your bed. Put your ear pods in, have it right by you, and just listen to the prayer while you lay in bed. Listen, you can even close your eyes and fall back to sleep and have that prayer just marinating in your spirit. Y'all don't hear me this, this morning. This is what you can do. And on next Sunday, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, and we will be meeting in person, in person, in person. Come out, come one, come all to the Residence Inn in Tanger Outlet, the address is 5035 International Boulevard in North Charleston, South Carolina. We will be in the Sumter Room. Service begins at 10 a.m. Wear your mask, but guess what? You don't have to bring no new suit in. You don't have to bring in no, no Easter baskets. We don't do Easter baskets at True Light. You don't have to do any of that. Just come. I don't care if you come in jeans and a t-shirt. I might be in jeans and a t-shirt because I'm unconventional like that. But just show up. And show up with the praise, show up with worship and show up ready. Glory be to God. Show up ready to receive from the Lord. God bless you. We love you. Have a tremendously blessed week.